guys. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. It is a gorgeous day here today. It's going to be very, very hot this afternoon, and we're expecting thunder showers tomorrow and probably some tonight because we're really getting warm temperatures for this time of year. Uh, we hit 33 yesterday, which was a tad toasty, and we're supposed to hit somewhere close to that again today. So I got all my watering done this morning, went and checked my flowers, you know, worked in the garden for a little bit and uh, got all that out of the way first thing this morning <laughs> because it's going to be too bloody hot to do it in the afternoon. So I get to spend my the rest of my Saturday down here in the studio with you guys and uh, it's nice and cool and comfy down here. So all is good. <laughs> Apparently it's foggy in Nova Scotia. It's yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably foggy on the south coast here too probably yeah because it's you know colder out there on the on the water than it is in here so good morning morning from boiling texas boiling te i know it's boiling <laughs> it is hot in texas right now i noticed that the other day i said, watched that pop up in the news Ugh. that's a tad too warm for me that's like arizona hot Ugh. no thanks <laughs> i don't do heat <laughs> It hits 26, 27 degrees. I hide in the studio because it's nice and cool down here. I don't do heat. So we're going to have a great afternoon of painting today. We're going to be painting Plant Sunshine, which is that fun little sunflower piece. I love sunflowers. They're just so much fun to paint. And it's just a nice, fun, summery piece. You could use it in the fall. You could use it through the summer. I just, anything with sunflowers, I'm happy to paint. So we're going to be painting that today, but before we get to that, we're going to uh, cover a couple of things. Um, our shout out for today goes to TombowUSA.com. I absolutely love Tombow products. Um, I use them constantly. Uh, one of my favorites is the Tombow Mechanical Pencil. The Mono Mechanical Pencil is one of my favorites. Any one of their drawing pencils are out of this world. And I'm a huge fan of their double-ended markers too. I have a whole set. Love those. And... Uh, so I got a box from Tombow yesterday afternoon with uh, some goodies for giveaways coming up. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. We've got some really cool stuff coming from Tombow. I am absolutely in love with um, a couple of their new products. They've got a really neat adhesive pen. I'm waiting for mine. I ordered a bunch because I had to try them. <laughs> they came highly recommended for a number from a number of designers in the paper crafting industry. So I was really anxious to try them. You guys know I love my, my foil and I love glitter and I love, you know, all that fun stuff. Well, you got to stick it to something. So I'm anxious to really work with this new pen, this glue pen, which I think is really cool because it can do some really fine details so I'm excited about that but what really got me going was uh, the, the mechanical pencils when those arrived I got I did a little happy dance because I love my mechanical pencils <laughs> so um, we do have a full stock of them on the website if you don't have one and you need one uh, but stick around for a couple of the lives coming up because we're going to be giving away some really great Tombow pencil sets and we got some awesome Tombow art liners you're going to love them so we're going to be uh, giving away some Tombow goodies in the next couple of weeks. And so if you're of a mind, go and check out TombowUSA.com. You're going to love what you find there. And they've got tons of edu educational worksheets available, free downloads on their website. So that if you're working with uh, some of the calligraphy pens and the brush pens, you're going to love it because they've got the templates and the worksheets there free. You can download them, print them out on your home printer and uh, start working with calligraphy with your Tombow pens. So that's my shout out for the week. My happy mail. I got a ton of Tombow stuff <laughs> yesterday. I was like a little kid in a candy store. And so I was digging through that box. They did send some really nice goodies. So we got that was my happy mail for this week. That made me very happy. I love art stuff. I love getting art stuff. So that was it. This week, we've got a really great giveaway for you from Dynasty. And uh, you're going to love this because this is really cool. It's a nice little brush set of Dynasty Water Lily Quills. They're amazing. So there's a nice set of those in the giveaway. We have three of them today. And then, we, of course, we threw in a whole bunch of other little goodies, too, and some Create Bags and 
some other fun stuff in there for you. So that will uh, be the happy fun part this afternoon when Renee spins that wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the happy and the fun. I like the happy and fun. So today we're going to be painting sunflowers. I love this piece. I love sunflowers. What did I forget now? You gave me that look. <laughs> no, I just, I, I'm not sure if you wanted to talk about the SPCA and oh, what, what yeah. they're doing right now. Yeah. Our local SPCA, um, who is the recipient of our glitter fund, um, had an emergency post put up yesterday um, in reference to, they had 80, 80 cats and kittens. Eight zero. Eight zero in the shelter. Um, they litters of kittens that had been turned over or abandoned or, you know, just such a sad situation, but they are literally <laughs> overrun <laughs> with cats and kittens. And they put out an emergency call to all the people that follow their uh, Facebook page looking for donations of wet cat food. So um, I went on to their social media page and uh, located their Amazon link mm -hmm. for their wish list. And uh, we sent them some goodies to uh, get them through. So we sent them off a big case of cat food for these little guys. And I think we're going to make that just start sending them some whenever we think of it. Because they're in a tight spot right now. They're a little overwhelmed <laughs> with cats and kittens. And they only have so many fosters. So we've been... So that's what we did. So on behalf of you guys. And because it was fun and it felt good to do it. <laughs> I just, I loaded up my Amazon account and sent them off some stuff. So, because they're hand feeding a whole pile of kittens. So they needed yeah. equipment and they needed a bunch of things. So, yeah, and I'm a soft touch. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they, uh, they don't have a lot of dogs right now, but they are overwhelmed with cats and kittens. Yeah. So, um they put out an emergency call for supplies yesterday <laughs> because they were in a bad way. So we sent them off on behalf of you guys. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you because you guys have been contributing and being so generous with the glitter fund and uh, supporting that kind of madness on our behalf. So we appreciate it. And I just wanted to let you know what we were doing on our end. So uh, yeah, my Amazon card took a <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it's all good. You got to work out. It'll work. Out. It's not a problem. So that's what we were, that's what I was up to yesterday. And I taught a Zoom class yesterday. Oh yeah, I had a go. Yeah, I had, it was awesome. I had some fun ladies. We painted Go Pick Daisies. That's an old one. It is an old one, but we had a really great time. It was an fun. oldie but a goodie. Yeah, it was a great way to spend a Friday afternoon. A lot of fun. But now it's Saturday and I get to play with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to paint Plant Sunshine. And Where's the finished product? Harvest Joy. Right here. I put a B on mine because, you know, I'm obsessed with these. <laughs> so plants. Got these backwards. Here. Plant sunshine, harvest joy. <laughs> you're going to show the camera? I'm going to. Well, you're going to. <laughs> there, I put it under a camera. Yeah, you did. I did. Wrong, wrong camera. Wrong, wrong but camera. There it is. <laughs> <sighs> Children. Yes. Can't live with them. Can't. Live yeah. with them. Live with them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Plant Sunshine. The Minic told me it looked like a giant bookmark. Would be a big book, but yeah. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was fun. And so that's what we're going to be painting today, including that fun little bee. I, I was going to say uh, it'd be like a bookmark for the Torah, but the Torah is a scroll. It is a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that joke didn't. Yeah, off. that one didn't gain any no. traction. But yes, so plant sunshine. That's what we're going to be painting today. Cool. And I, I have pretty fingers. Gave myself a manicure this morning. Gone in And I'm going to wreck it before the day is over. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. If you guys are ready to get painting, so am I. Let's rock and roll. I love these. I, they're just such fun pieces. I just, oh, I broke my bee. You done broke the bee. I broke it, my bee. He's got a fractured wing. I'm going to have to fix him. You're going to have to or get, replace him. get underneath the camera a little <laughs> bit better. I'm going to need a new bee. There you go. I broke his wing. 
Oops. <laughs> He's been handled a bit much the last couple of days. Moving him from point A to point B. I've been trying to clean up the studio. It's not working. So, yeah, we have a fractured wing. That's my diagnosis. But we will fix them up. So this is the one that we're doing. I love this one. Plant sunshine, harvest joy. I just really like that quote. So it worked really well. Um, and here's... <laughs> so my shipment of these has not arrived. It should be here Monday um, for these tags so I didn't have the actual tag to work on so I went digging in my stash and this is what I found this is an awesome surface from Sheila Landry at tollpaintingdesigns.com I love this surface it's a giant rolling pin and uh, I thought oh wouldn't this be cute hanging in the kitchen with these bright sunshine uh, bright sunflowers sunshine bright sunflowers on it I just thought it would be a great surface for this piece I didn't have to enlarge it. I just had to extend the, the, the drawing just a little, really not a lot, so just a little. So it worked out quite well. So on my rolling pin, I have two coats of Prussian blue. It's a little dinged up because I was a little rough with it. So we're going to use this. I'm kind of obsessed with this half inch check stencil I've been using this one a lot and we need a stencil brush and we need some cobblestone this is it lately has been my go-to color for things I just love this color I must love it because I painted the bathroom that color <laughs> So cobblestone it is. We're going to stencil this surface with cobblestone. I'm going to secure my stencil to the surface with a little piece of fingers tape. I move my wounded bee out of the way. So I'm just going to align My stencil. I like having the checks go off the surface a little bit. It'd be nice if they were straight. There we go. So I'll put it, secure it, just so that it doesn't move. I don't want to uh, have it shift while I'm working. Now I'm using just a small quantity of cobblestone on my stencil brush. I don't want these squares fully opaque. And I work in a circular fashion and I change directions frequently. Why is Karen in pain? Probably hurt her back. Oh no. Apparently she's all drugged up. Oh, that would be worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm shedding again. I got gray hair in my paint. So I'm just putting on a light touch. I don't want fully opaque coverage with this. I just kind of want some irregular squares. Like so. And then I'll realign the stencil just so that everything is moderately straight, reasonably straight. And our sweet little Linda um, had a, a scary couple of days. Her husband was unwell and spent a little time at the emergency room. So Franco? Yeah. Oh, no. So, but apparently he's doing better and is at home now. But uh, it's a, it makes for a stressful week. So just to let Linda know that we've been thinking about you. 
Oh, Debbie Marlowe. Just donated $20. Nice. Thank you, Debbie. Says a little drop in the bucket for our whisker friends. <laughs> well, you know what? That little drop in the bucket means a case of cat food to help feed the kitties. Yeah. It means, you know, the proper formula, a couple of cans of that proper formula for those kitties. So Ooblick. every little bit helps. A little bit of oobleck. Those little donations, big donations, they all, they're all equally valuable. There we go. So I have checks everywhere. <laughs> they're all important, all important. And I know that our local shelter is grateful for the help, believe you me. Our local one only has... Um, two paid employees both of them are veterinary care staff yeah the rest are all volunteers so um, it's you know it's a struggle for them at times to uh, make sure they have people there to look for look after all of those animals so so once you have all of that stenciling on there you're going to want to take your Ultra fine, some nice fine sandpaper, like a finishing grade sandpaper or one of these little sanding discs. And you're going to sand quite aggressively because you want to wear through some of these checks. We want to wear them down a little bit. Like so. And don't worry that it's going to scuff up the surface because that doesn't matter. So. Somebody's having a good day. Oh. Uh, nice and sunny here. Just played ball in the backyard with four dogs. <laughs> dogs sitting two. Plus her two. Pupper dogs. Pupper dogs. So I'm going to wipe off this dust because it does get dusty. You can see I've got dust everywhere here. So I'm going to wipe that down. And then I'm going to take my wet fugly brush. And this shows you just how much you've worn down. And that way you can see what you've got. And oh, I like it. So I've got a lot of wear and tear in there. I've worn right through some of those checks. I love this look. I like that distressed country look. It just, it appeals to me on a lot of levels. So I'm going to dry this real quick. So apparently Ellie Purcell from Facebook mm -hmm. uh, thanks you for her brushes. Oh, nice. Uh, she didn't know she won. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a great surprise. Sometimes we're fortunate that, because uh, not everybody gets to, hears it or sees it, you know, they may have been out of the room at the time or maybe they had to, you know, had other obligations and couldn't watch all the way through, so they missed the drawing. But um, sometimes we're lucky and we have their shipping information in the server yeah. and it's easy to find. It's not always easy to find. So, um, that's why I always ask to uh, send me your shipping information so that we can <laughs> get them out in a timely fashion because I can't, I, I just don't have time to be chasing addresses. So um, that's why we give it two weeks. If we haven't heard from some of the winners in two weeks and we don't have your shipping information in, on file, um, then it just goes back into the bin. So uh, fortunately... Um, we don't get that often. Nope. We don't get it very often. So Don't have much of a bin anymore. No, we don't have much of a bin anymore. Well, I shouldn't say that. Well, you 12 know, Days of Christmas is a little different. Because <laughs> yeah, that bin is filling up quick. Yeah. <laughs> Tombow, Dynasty, FM Brush. Uh, yeah, Decor stuff. Decor. Um, got some stuff from uh, uh, Southern some Ridge. Di Southern Ridge Trading, Cupboard Distributing, <laughs> Sheila Landry. I mean, those bins fill up really quick. Yep. And 
our 12 days of Christmas, I've been trying to figure out a, a good way to do this. And I'm thinking we're going to do 12 pa prize packs this year. Just 12. But they're going to be really good. Well, last ones. year, I think we overdid it. I think we overdid it last year. <laughs> it was just getting them ready to ship was the killer. Yeah. Shipping costs are ridiculous, so... So we'll do 12 giveaways. We're going to do 12 on the 12 days of Christmas, but they're going to be really good ones. <laughs> really good ones. Oodles of stuff. Oodles of stuff. We have stuff from Stencil Studio. We have stuff from Stampendous. Um, yeah, there's. it's already filling up <laughs> in there. It's crazy. So once you have that all distressed, worn through, and you can do as much or as little as you like. If you prefer to see more opaque checks them by all means put on more like make them fully opaque if you like to have them lightly distressed or heavily distressed do it any way you like whatever appeals to you i'm kind of in the middle i like to see the check but i also like seeing all that wear and tear i like them to look like they've been around since time out of mind that's what i like that, and i also like this smooth surface that uh sanding disc yeah this yeah what brand uh, this is a 3m Believe it or not, they're very hard to find. Um, I've had these ones for years. Quite literally for years. They're a wet-dry sander, so I just wash them and clean them up every once in a while. But I've, I've had these ones for years. Having said that, you can buy sheets. They're a rubberized sheet that is exactly the same. And then cut them to size. <laughs> so... I like these ones. Um, I have a couple of different ones. I have these. Uh, these ones are a little coarser. But these ones are that ultra fine. They're very, very, very fine. I love those. But they are difficult to find, unfortunately. So once you have this all sanded, we're going to age the edges of this a little bit. I don't want to do a ton of it, but a little. So I just like a little float of asphaltum around the outside edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just going to give the edges a little warmth. And you can go all the way around in this case. It's a rolling pin. I kind of like the, you know, sort of looks like it's been there for a while. I'm not really worried about being neat and tidy with this. I love this surface. I've had three or four of these sitting here for the longest time and I was trying to decide what I wanted to do with them. I have a couple of designs already drawn up for these. Um, but then I was digging around for something to paint these sunflowers on because I didn't have the tags. And uh, I came up with this rolling pin and it's just, it's so cute. And it's going to make a very cute sunflower piece. This will be so pretty in my kitchen. Happy and sunshiny. So I just went all the way around the outside edge, little float of asphaltum. It's just to age the edges a little bit. It just slightly changes that blue. So I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to put a light wash of thin dash faultum over everything just to tone it. That's all this does. Just tones that blue a little. So I have a fugly brush and a little bit of water I don't want this super strong. I just want to, oops, might be a little strong. That's okay. It's asphaltum. I love asphaltum. I just like the sort of, it's been hanging around in the barn for the last 10 years look. And I'll dry that. And then once that's completely dry, you're ready to trace and transfer your line drawing on. Now, if you wanted to, you could do your spattering now. But 
I think we'll leave. I love the spatter. Spattering is my thing. I like it. So how that asphaltum just keeps this blue from being entirely too cold. Gives it a nice warm tone and a nice aged look, which appeals. So I'm a fan. I love this look. So tracing and transferring, um, my suggestion is to use a good sheet of um, white or a light gray or yellow uh, graphite paper or serral and this is my pen of choice for tracing and transferring the reason I do is because of this it has that super fine point I don't use a stylus for tracing I don't use a stylus at all actually <laughs> but I don't use a stylus for tracing because I've always found that the line work was very heavy and it was difficult to remove and with this ultra fine point it just makes it easier to get rid of. It's finer and it's just in general, even if you can't get it off or you don't get it off, it's very fine, it hardly is noticeable. And then working over the line drawing with the red pen, you can see where you've been. So you're not constantly having to flip your line drawing to figure out if you missed anything. So that is my reasoning for using that Uniball Signo. This is a 0.38, it's a very fine pen. And I use the black gel pen uh, for detailing on my painted pieces, but I also use it uh, in my design work. So those are the two pens that I use the most often are these ones right here. And then of course I gotta have my Uniball Signo with the white, opaque white, because I just like that too. So through the magic of television, ta-da! <laughs> hey, girls gotta be able to do these things. So my base color uh, for these sunflowers is Sunny Day, my favorite yellow. I just love this. It's a nice opaque yellow. It covers really nicely. Uh, but before I do that, I always go over it with a little bit of warm white or a lit light coat of gesso. It just helps in the coverage. Um, yellows are notoriously transparent and they don't cover very well. And they're even worse if you're over top of a really dark color like this Prussian blue. So. I like to use just that base of warm white or gesso on there. It just makes a world of difference. So we're going to use Sunny Day to base coat those petals. Such a pretty color. And I'm going to use a round. I'm a fan of my round brushes. I'll rinse out my angle here. So round brush. I use a little bit of Joe Sonia's in my paint just a little and I base coat following the shape of the leaf or the petal jeez bunny leaves so that all of the brush marks the stria the lines all go in the same direction So we're not looking for an absolutely perfectly opaque base coat for this. And that little bit of white underneath just keeps those yellows nice and bright. And I also like to do these every other petal first. And following the shape of that petal, so you can see that those lines follow the curve. Ooh, what? I just... Did you miss a bunch of stuff? I missed a donation. Oh, goodness. Ooh, soup pots? Of course. <laughs> Oh, and Sue got her butterfly piece. Did she? Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. I don't know where the other one is. Where it went, but... <laughs> but 
it doesn't matter. As long as she got her dips piece, I'm happy. Good, 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 good. Yeah. But and yeah, Brenda Owens is on, hers is on the way. That one was the other one that went missing. Yeah. So Sue Potts donated $25 mm -hmm. saying more for the kitties. Thank you very much, Sue. I appreciate you. Sue, I think, is one of our biggest supporters with this endeavor. She's always very generous. All of you are. Still 80 cats and kittens. Yeah, I know. Wow. That's a lot of kitties. <laughs> And that means a lot of space that are needed, and it's going to be a while before all of those cats and kittens are found homes. It's brutal. Debbie Renwick. What am I missing? Yeah, it says, hello from Louisiana. Oof, this is my first time getting to watch you work live. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned so much from you. Thank you for giving us all the time and effort it takes to make them. Oh, well, thank you. We have a lot of fun doing this. It's kitten season. <laughs> yes, it is kitten season. Yeah. <laughs> So I've got my first row, missed one, my first row of petals is done. And then I can come back in and I can leave that little gap. I know I'm always talking about that little gap, that little narrow space between. It just makes putting in your shading a little easier, having that little narrow gap between the various <coughs> elements. And so if you can paint them one at a time, base coat them one at a time, it just makes things a little bit easier on you. Of course, all the people from Louisiana are asking, where are you from? Of course. What part of Louisiana? <laughs> and our Linda Sofranco is on top of that. Of course she is. <laughs> our dear Linda. And Lucy. Oh, yeah, Lucy's from Louisiana. I forgot that. It's a great state, Louisiana. Great food. Yeah, <laughs> you leave it to you to. <laughs> you would I go base on the states on their food. <laughs> <laughs> you base everything on their food. <laughs> the countries I visit. Yeah. Yeah, you went to Cyprus. How much Greek food did you eat while you were there? A lot. <laughs> oh, why am I? Not I had a lot of Greek. I had a lot of Mediterranean food. Yeah. Um, I did have a lot of Turkish food, too. Mm-hmm. And lots of seafood. <laughs> I, You know, I'm really glad that you grew up in an atmosphere where, we, you know, we had so many different food influences. Well, that's the great thing about Canada. Yeah. You can't walk down the street without... Seeing some, no, yeah. so, but uh, neither you or your sister is overly fussy. You'll eat almost anything. Yeah. You have very few dislikes when it comes to food. <laughs> Scalloped potatoes is probably the only yeah one, but that is it solely on texture. Yeah, it's like your sister and fish she doesn't like fish. She doesn't like some fish. She doesn't like seafood. And I can tolerate licorice. I love licorice. Black licorice. And it wasn't until I was introduced to star, star anise. Yeah. That you that, appreciated licorice. <laughs> that I appreciated the flavor of licorice. Yeah. And what it can do to food. Yeah. I grew up 
we had like soft black licorice growing up and it usually came in a block or it came in a pipe or a little cigar yeah when we were kids i still can't stand black licorice on its own oh i love black licorice I, but it, you no. can't eat a lot of it because it's actually toxic that explains why I don't like it. Yeah. You can't eat a lot of it because it can cause some issues. Red licorice is not too bad. No. Well, red licorice isn't licorice. No, that's no. true. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's something, but I'm not sure what. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've got my petals all done. Now, we've got two stems and three leaves to base. And I'm using a little bit of antique green. It's my go-to green. I love it. If you don't have antique green, you can use avocado. You can use lush green, which is that new Decorate green. That's a really nice one. And again, I treat the leaves just like I treat the flowers. I follow the shape of the leaf. When I base coat it in, and with that white base that I put down, I don't need to have... A fully opaque base coat. I, I'm with Judy Farmer on that one. What's that? Red vines. Red vines? It's uh, red licorice. Oh, okay. I know the one you mean. Yeah. It's the one that you peel. That's a Twizzler. No, no, no. That's not a Twizzler. Twizzler is the stick with the twist in it. Yeah. and they... Red vines are the ones where you can peel off individual thin. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I like those ones. Yeah. We call those shoestrings here. <laughs> red licorice is red. It's red, yeah. <laughs> what flavor is it? Red. Red. <laughs> it's red. It's like, what's the best flavor of Kool Aid? Purple. Blue. Well, that's debatable. I don't like blue. <laughs> what flavor is it? It's blue. It's blue. <laughs> what's kind of freaky is when you realize it's supposed to be raspberry. <laughs> it's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> blue raspberry. What? It's what? <laughs> But yet, there is a blue raspberry. Yeah, blue raspberry. And they do naturally occur. Yeah. But what cracks me up is that, you know, your brain just can't process. Yeah. Yeah. So blue, it's, it's, raspberry. it's not raspberry. Mm -hmm. It's just blue. What flavor? Blue. <laughs> it's like blackberries. Yum. Mm. Blackberries and currant. Oh, I love currants. Blackberries I'm not keen on because of the seeds, but the uh, currants? Yum. Mm. And I particularly love currants and jams and jellies. It's like um, boysenberries. I love boysenberries. Karen's offering to make rouladen uh -oh. as long as you make spatzel. If As long as I make spatzel? Yep. Okay. <laughs> she knows that your spatzel is best spatzel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Karen makes the best best roulade yeah they melt they're so tasty so little antique green for those stems and we are base coated so somebody asked me the other day why or how i base coat so quickly it's because i only put one coat of it down i usually put an undercoat of warm white or some gesso but i, I generally only use one coat of a color and it has more to do with how I put the paint on than it does how much I put the paint on. Hmm. What are you mean about now? Hmm. Anise or fennel in Italian food. Yep. Yum. I love fennel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I spent some time. What's yes. in the pot? What's in the pot? What's in the pot upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> What's in the pot? <laughs> What's in the box? It smells good, doesn't it? It does. What is it? <laughs> it's pot roast. Is it pot roast? It smells delicious. That's, that's what I was doing at 5.30 this morning. I was ruminating on what we were having for dinner tonight. <laughs> and you decided on pot I roast. I decided on pot roast. Okay. I was digging through the freezer at 5.30 this what is morning. Was it red wine? Uh, no. Did any red wine make it in there? No, no. not a drop. So, oh, you're three sheets to the wind right now? Uh, or? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I put sometimes I put it in the food. <laughs> <laughs> I cook with wine. Sometimes I put it in the food. Um, no, I used. Um, it's a favorite trick of mine. It's just using uh, nor vegetable soup. And then you add a little bit of uh, balsamic vinegar, and I threw in a little That's bit of... That's what that smell was. Yeah, and a little bit of uh, Worcestershire sauce. Mm. That's it. But you can do that with any dry vegetable soup mix. It, it just gives it a really great flavor. <laughs> it's an easy way to do a pot roast, especially in a slow cooker. Oh, we got them talking about lemonade. Or, uh, not lemonade. Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid? <laughs> They're discussing Kool-Aid now? Yeah. Well, Facebook is. Yeah. Best green cool. <laughs> oh green my Kool-Aid God, you just is put me on a lemon lime. Diet. This talk is killing me. I'm sorry, Virginia. <laughs> Janet Mills, I make fantastic spatzel. Ooh, share. I'd love to see your recipe. Sausage, peppers, and onions for dinner. Ooh. I love black licorice and black jelly beans. Yes. No. Black jelly beans, black licorice, and my favorite jujube is the black ones. Of course they are. I love the black jujubes. They're so good. I'm the... Either the green ones if they taste like lime. The yellow ones if they taste like lemon. Yeah. If they taste like pineapple or banana, no. they can go in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you there. Uh, <laughs> So the other day, Renee peeled six pounds of lemons for me. Yeah. And, and then juiced them. And then juiced them. So I have a, a quart of fresh lemon juice mm. in my fridge. Um, and then we put the <gasps> lemon zest or the peels into the dehydrator. And uh, so now I have a quart of dried lemon rind. I got to find out who the good old girls are. The good old girls? The good old girls. The ones that know how to make sweet tea. Oh, good sweet tea? I, I want a recipe. For sweet tea. <laughs> See, you know, I, I like southern tea, but without the sweet. I like just... Like bitter tea? Oh, so good. I gotta find, I gotta find somebody. Uh, somebody on here I know is gonna be <laughs> a good old girl who knows how to make sweet tea. Yep. There's bound to be one. So we're going to use a little bit of orange flame. But I got thinking. I'm watching intently now. <laughs> Are you? <just> <laughs> He's watching that chat. Just yeah. <laughs> somebody give me a recipe for sweet tea. Thank you, Janet. I would love your recipe. I like using a little bit of lemon rind in my sugar cookies. I like using a little bit of lemon rind in my shortbread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, but um, I dry the lemon rind and then run it through my food processor till it makes a powder. And then you can use quarter teaspoon or half teaspoon at a time in your baking. You never, you always have really strong lemon rind, but you don't necessarily have to have the lemons. <laughs> Tea, sugar, mix together and throw down the sink. No! <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like, like a Newfie recipe for, you know, moose meat. Mm. <laughs> Cover it in a gallon of screech and <laughs> let it soak for four hours and then throw the meat out. Ooh, one gallon of water, Lipton tea bags. How many tea bags? Do I throw the whole box in, or like? <laughs> yeah. Hello, it's Renee. You're going to have to be a lot more specific. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> One cup of sugar. Okay. Yeah, you can't just wing it with him. No. No. You wing it, you're going to end up with molasses. Yeah. Boy has a sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to show and you. Set out into the sun to brew. Sun tea. Yeah. <gasps> Okay. I got great big glass jars that arrived this week. We oh, can make some tea. Yeah. I'm done. So I wanted to show you a quick trick. Now, a lot of the time in my patterns, when I, especially for sunflowers, I use a little bit of... Six. Six. Okay. Six <laughs> bags. One cup of sugar, gallon of water. 
Okay. We're good cool. to go. We Can we it. talk about painting now? <laughs> I got my recipe. I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> so ordinarily, we want these petals to have sort of that cup, like a little bit of a bend, a bowl in them. And to create that, I use just a little float of, this is orange flame. And it's a, a C-shaped float that doesn't come to the edge of the petal. So it comes in about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the petal. Let me see if I can get that up closer to the camera. So that there's not right to the edge of the petal. So it's just in a little bit. Do you see? So when you do that to each of those petals, especially these larger ones at the front, this helps create that little cup or that fold so that they don't look flat. Just like that. So it's a C-shaped float. Now, if you don't have orange flame, here's another really great color you can use. It's this one. This is red spice. This is that sort of orangey, burnt orange terracotta color, but it's a little more transparent. And so it has a nice deep tone to it. So I'm going to do this one down here with the, with the red spice. It has that great orange tone to it, but it's a little deeper. And so you get a deeper shadow like that. And it's going to look amazing with the last step that we do on these flowers. So that little C-stroke float that you put on this leaf, on this petal, is going to give you that, that nice little bend, that curve, that little bit of dimension that we need in these flowers. And it's a little bit richer, gives you sort of a, a reddish brown tone, which I really like in these sunflowers. It is a nice rich tone. Now the orange flame is a little more transparent, a little lighter. So if I go over it with a second float, I get a little more depth, but it looks a little bit more opaque. So. But I love, this is just such a simple method to get that, that cup shape, that little bit of dimension that you want. And we're going to enhance that a little further on. And this is fast and easy. Don't putz with it too much. Don't worry about it. So we've got that color in. That's, so that's our first shading on these flowers. And I'm going to switch to a smaller angle. I'm going to switch to a 3 8 because I'm going into a smaller area. So I'm using this one as a 3 8 water lily. And I'm going to pick up that little bit of orange flame. And I'm going to separate these petals with a float in between. So that's what separates all of these petals that are in behind is that little float. And having that smaller angle is going to let you get down in there a little easier. Just like that. Now this goes pretty quickly. You don't have to putz with this too much. And that sunflower starts to take shape very quickly. How fun is that? 
Oh. What? So that recipe is for like a foundation. Okay. You're supposed to water it down. Okay. Before serving. Gotcha. Cool. So you can control how strong it tastes. Yeah, how sweet it is. And how sweet it is. See, I like just tea. Uh, Kathy's wondering, because she's curious, why did you choose a water lily to, for the float instead of a black gold angle? Um, I've been playing with these water lilies quite a bit lately. Dynasty sent me a whole bouquet of them to play with. So I've been putting them through their paces. Um, I'm liking the water lily. They are very soft compared to the black gold and to the faux squirrel. Uh, but they do have a nice chisel edge. They have hold a ton of paint, I will say. And I'm really quite liking them. But you could use any of those. Black gold or faux squirrel would work just fine. I just chose this one because I've been playing with these a lot lately. Dynasty was very generous. They sent me a bunch of brushes for give giveaways. So we have a lot of uh, of these water lily brushes for giveaways. We also have a lot of black gold. We have a lot of um, we have a lot of everything. <laughs> Sorry, Dynasty is very generous. So um, they were really really great, but making sure that we had lots of of brushes for you guys. So. So we've got all that first shading in. Look how quickly that went and how fast they took shape. So we're going to use a little bit of plantation pine and a little bit of sprout. I love this color. This sprout is just such a great green for highlighting. And we're going to use a little bit of plantation pine for the shading. That plantation pine is just such a rich green. Nicely transparent. And we have two leaves here. This one overlaps this one. So we want to put a shadow right here so that it separates these two leaves. And then we're going to shade underneath those petals like so. Just a nice little float. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it's going to knock that leaf in behind. Keep it back a bit. And we will probably have to do a second float just to deepen it a little. And we're going to do the same thing to this one. So there we have separated our leaves and we've set that one back a little and then come down to this leaf here. I love plantation pine. It's just such a lovely shading green for almost all shades of green. It works really well and, and it's almost entirely due to that level of transparency. So it's a nice rich green. You can thin it out and make it fairly light so it's an easy color to control. And now we have to give it a center vein. So let's dry this first. So we've got a center vein. I put one here as well. And I'm going to come over here. Now this one, we need to have a fairly deep center vein because it's short. There we go. And then I'm just going to deepen some of these shadows a little bit 
to give us a little more contrast here. Oh. Uh-oh. What recipe came up now? An Arnold Palmer. Oh, what's an Arnold Palmer? Half tea, half lemonade. Oh, okay. Ooh, that would be good. Yeah. I know that name because um, it's the Arizona iced tea oh. <laughs> can, and it has a picture of Arnold Palmer on it. Okay. It's a black can with yellow writing. Okay. And it was the, if you could find it at the PX, you bought it by the flat because okay. it was the most refreshing one they make. Okay. But it was also the one they sold a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> so it disappeared quick. Yeah. I gotcha. It's funny because I've never seen any other flavor other than the ginseng anywhere. Up here, yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while you'll see the, the Arnold, Arnold Palmer. Okay, so I've got my shadows deepened a little bit. We are going to deepen them again. So we're going to come down and we're going to put a little shadow under this leaf on the stem. And I'm going to pull it down about a half an inch or so. Just down the stem a little bit. And again here where it overlaps underneath that. And this little one here. It's just a little float, and I just sort of pity pat and bring it down a little. Fun, fun, fun. So I'm going to dry this. And then I'm <laughs> we're going to highlight these leaves with a little bit of that sprout. I love this green for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it, it's a high yellow green, which works really well with this color combination. In fact, if you have a look at these greens, they all have a fair amount of yellow in them. And this sprout is almost yellow. It's just such a pretty, pretty green. And it's a very watery float. I'm not using a ton of it, but this is how I float the edges. It kind of gives you a serrated look at the edge of the leaf. So you see how I wiggle the brush? I'm kind of working in a series of little U-shaped floats. So if I were to slow it down, it would look like this. So little U-shaped floats. That's if I slow it down. If I speed it up, it looks like this. So it helps give you a little serrated look at the edge of the leaf. And we kind of have to be careful in a couple of spots here because there's only a little bit of light there. And then a nice little float on that center vein. You guys got to stop giving him recipes and ideas because I'm he's drooling here. Yay, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like I wasn't sleep. I haven't been sleeping well, so I um. She cooks. I cook. <laughs> <laughs> so how I, how am I not above two hundred pounds? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't get it. I uh, I was awake very, very early, and I don't like to get up and wake everybody in the household, because if I get up, i got to do stuff, and I don't want to wake everybody, so I, I curled up in my easy chair with my iPad and, and went through my recipe file on Pinterest, and I found a recipe for lemon blueberry loaf. Oh. Yum, so good. I have several, but this was one I had never used. Is there still love? Yeah, there is. Yeah, I, there's not right much back. left. <laughs> uh, but uh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so I ended up making lemon blueberry loaf. 
because because I'm not sleeping. So I end up <laughs> I end up cooking. So and because I'm not sleeping, I have far too much time on my hands. I it's if I come down to the studio, I'm going to wake everybody up. And I don't want to do that. So I play on my iPad and search for recipes and whatnot. It's better than online shopping, I have to say. <laughs> so there's my little highlight. And as I said, if, you, if I slow this down, it's like a series of little U's. But it gives you a little bit of a serrated edge. And it's quite soft. It's not a sharp, harsh line. So it's quite soft. And then all you have to do is use that same little bit of green to put in a little highlight on the stems. Nothing fancy, just a simple one above and below the shading on this and a little bit right here. And then this is where you come back in because this is where you get to clean things up a little bit. You can come back in with a little bit of that plantation pine and clean up some of your shading, deepen some of those shadows, clean up a few little odds and sods that need adjusting or if they're perhaps not as smooth as you would like, this is your opportunity is just to come in and deepen those things with a little float of that plantation pine. And for me, that's just it gives me an opportunity to clean up that highlight, gives me a nice brighter highlight. It gives me more depth. And so I'm going to dry this. And we will tone this a little later on with a little bit of Ishfaltum. So I've got a fun little technique for this. Look at this. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> you open? No. <laughs> you enjoy your slab of lemon blueberry. Oh. He doesn't. Most people take a slice. He takes a slab. So, the color I'm going to use next is this one. It's saffron, saffron yellow. I really love the punch that this gives everything. I love that it just, everything gets more saturated with this color. And it is quite transparent. So we're going to use just a little bit of it. And I'm going to use a round brush for this. And a little bit of my Joe Sonia's. And we're just going to thin it out on the palette just to create a wash. And I like to put a wash of this yellow over everything on these petals. It's just a wash, but it gives these flowers just that pop of heat, that gorgeous bright yellow. And because you're putting it on all the petals, you don't have to be all that neat and tidy about it. It's just a wash of color. Look at that. So it goes over top of that gorgeous orange, that orange flame, over top of that sunny day. And it just gives you a really brilliant saturated yellow. <laughs> you happy now? Yep. So he got his sugar fix. He's good for a half an hour or so. It's not that sweet, though. No. I like it. I've actually gotten away from super sweet things. Yeah. Well, it, the thing I liked about that recipe was, uh, one, it was very different from my other recipes for a lemon loaf. Um, it used a half cup of sour cream or uh, Greek yogurt, either one. In it. Wait, it, it's a Linda birthday? Which Linda? Which Linda's birthday is it? Whose birthday? It's 
I love how saturated this yellow is. So it just helps tone. That's just essentially what we're doing is just toning those yellows. But look at all the heat we get out of it. I love, love saffron yellow. It just really pops out on camera. It, it pops out, period. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Sprouse. Linda Sprouse. It's happy. It's happy birthday day for Linda Sprouse. Yes. Well, happy birthday, Linda. So a quick wash of this color over top of all of that. And look at the difference it makes. Those sunflowers now have lots of heat. So we got all that vibrancy. And I can tell you, if you're going to base coat with saffron yellow, you'll be there for a month of Sundays. <laughs> because so it has to go over top another yellow. That's what I've always found that it works best when it goes over top of another yellow. Because trying to base coat with it is just horrendous because it is such a transparent yellow. But when you do it this way and it goes over top of those oranges, it does a couple of things. One, it softens all of those floats and intensifies the orange, intensifies the yellows. You get all of this warmth, all of this heat, and at the same time, it helps make everything a bit more cohesive. Excuse me. So it's just a great way to make your flowers zing. So I'm going to dry this real quick, and then we're going to tone everything a little bit. And then we're going to have a little bit of fun. Fun? Yeah. So we're going to enhance the look of these petals. Right now they look very stiff and rigid. And we're going to soften them up a little. And 80th? What's that? 80th birthday. Wow. Happy 80th. Damn. So we're going to come back in with that sunny day. So I'm going to thin it out. And we're going to use a 10 aught extra long detail liner for this. And we're going to enhance the look of that cup. This is where it comes back to that cup. I'm going to put a little pressure right at the tip, right here where it joins. And then we're going to put a little flip on the end. So a little pressure gives us a little teardrop shape and then follow the edge of that petal with a squiggly line. And we're going to do that to each one of these larger petals, the first ones that we did. So it does two things. It enhances the look of that cup shape by adding a little bit of a highlight. It also covers any little wobbles or bobbles where your petals overlapped? Remember those little spaces in between everything? This is your chance to make some of those go away. And at the same time, it softens these petals with that little squiggly line. So now we've got these nice delicate, almost a ripple at the edge of those petals. Don Lavelle's painting ornaments from Sheila Landry today. Ah, I love Sheila's ornaments. I have a bunch of them I have to paint. So we had a whole bunch of, of you guys joined the, the live group this week and we've been adding a bunch of things to that page this week because it's just going to be a fun place for us to hang out um, so there's some free printables up there for you guys you can just look at the top of the uh, Tracy Morrill live group page 
um, there is a spot where it says highlighted or featured items and um, there's a free printable in that featured area just click on it it'll take you right to the link So that is how I get that sort of ruffled look to these sunflowers so that they're not so static and stiff looking. We wanted a softer edge and that's how I do it. It's just by putting that sort of soft scribbly bit of sunny day along the edge of the flowers. So sort of a comma stroke and then just let the liner do the work. Just like that. That little comma stroke creates that little cup in the petal. And then that sort of soft squiggly line just softens the edge of the petals so that you get this kind of delicate look. I really like the rolling pin. Isn't that cute? I think it's going to look great in my kitchen. <laughs> Such a fun way to, to decorate. I love doing things like this for my kitchen. It's also Janet Mills' birthday today. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> I must have been sleeping at the switch. I usually see, you know, everybody that's on my friends list, so. But I haven't really been on Facebook today. I was on there for five minutes this morning, put up the thought for the day, and that was about it. And my did you know? I'm enjoying doing the did you know thing. What'd you do for the did you know? Uh, today it was Renoir. Of course. Pierre Auguste Renoir, which is my <laughs> favorite impressionist. Renee knows that. Yep. Um, but he was also a decorative painter before he was a famous painter. Ah. Before he even went to art school in Paris. He worked in a ceramics factory decorating, painting ceramics. Hmm. And then when they uh, mechanized the factory and no longer required anybody to hand paint things, um, he continued to do work but hand painted fans and banners and things like that. Hmm. And then he went to Des Ecoles de Beaux-Arts in Paris. And the rest is history. Hmm. Literally. <laughs> Uh, Vicky's wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the new wax paint. Oh, the wax effects. Yeah. Um, I have some here. You right. should really play with those. I don't, if you're familiar at all with um, encaustic, encaustic is an art form that utilizes tinted wax and layers of wax to create art. And there are so many different levels of it. So I've seen portraits done with encaustics. I've seen landscapes and beautiful mixed media pieces. And I've done a few of it, a few pieces myself using encaustics. Mm. Um, there's a few issues with it, having to heat wax. Um, it's m very messy. <laughs> so if you're fastidious, <laughs> it's very messy. Um, but there's a number of, of different ways you can do it. The wax effects are essentially uh, a tinted medium that is semi-transparent or transparent, much like wax would be, to allow you to layer, put layer and layer and layer. So you can still do a lot of the same techniques that you would with wax, but the wax effects are done with a water-based acrylic formula instead. Um, so they are really cool. I have not had a lot of opportunity to play with mine, but, um, looking forward to it. Sandy has done a bit more with it than I have, but they are a very cool product. So just like what I did 
to the edges of the petals. I'm doing the same thing to the leaves, just with a very fine line. And I'm using a little bit of that sprout green, that highlight color that we used. I've heavily thinned it so that I can get a really nice fine line. And I like to put a little flip on the edge, you know, little curly cues on the edges of the leaves. And then while I'm at it, one of the things that I like doing, I like little vines and tendrils on my pieces. So I'm just going to use my liner to stroke in a little bit of that, which is one of the reasons I love these brushes. I just love my... We actually have a couple of encaustic paintings and our gallery and one of them is actually on display now it's actually a portrait of the shower scream from psycho oh really hitchcock psycho oh wow so it's impressive and it's completely done in an encaustics wow uh there's a lovely lady in ontario um Kathy Donaldson, she, her work is just amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, she does a very mixed media form of encaustic. So she layers stenciling and gold leaf and bits of paper. And she does some really amazing things hmm. with encaustics. Nancy Donaldson, sorry, my hmm. name. Cedar waxing? Question mark? I don't know what cedar waxing is. No, that's a new one on me. So. I tucked a couple of little vines in because I can. And I had the brush loaded, so why not? <laughs> what are the brushes you use? All of them. <laughs> I think she's looking for something a bit more specific. <laughs> <laughs> the um, ones you normally use. Oh, the ones I normally use? Yeah. I, mine are pretty straightforward. I use a lot of Dynasty Faux Swirl, just this one, uh, with the silver handles. I use Dynasty Black Gold quite frequently, which are these ones with that uh, black and natural lacquered finish. I uh, use the Dynasty Micron, which is all of my, my detailed brushes, all of my fine liners, my 15 knot, my 10 knot liners are Dynasty brushes. The riggers that I use, the brushes that I use for my lettering um, are these ones, Dynasty Faux Squirrel. And the ones that I use the most often are the two, the zero and the 10 knot. The 10 knot is for really tiny little lettering, but uh, the zero and the two are the ones that I use the most frequently. Of course, I have to have a fugly brush, which is this one. This is a Dynasty encaustic brush. Um, I love this one. I use this for everything. Base coating, decoupage, you name it. This is my do everything brush. So that, and then I'm of late have been using a lot of the Dynasty water lily um, because I was given a lot of them and hadn't really played with them much so I decided I was going to set my other brushes aside and just work with these for a while and I've really come to love these. I love the fact that they hold a chisel edge. I love that they hold so much paint. Uh, these are just a great little brush. So in all honesty I don't use 10 tons of brushes when I paint. I might use various sizes of the same type of brush I don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use 10 tons of brushes. I don't. I have 10 tons of brushes. <laughs> but Okay, fair. <laughs> you use 1% so of your I 10 use tons. One, exactly. So um, I use angles mostly. Riggers. I have to have my, my fugly brush. At least two or three sizes of a good stencil brush. Good quality one. And that um, happens to have your name on it. And, and one that happens to have my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Product there's, plug. Yeah, yeah. Shameless plug is what that <laughs> was. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and then um, I do like the odd specialty brush. Um, this is the Dynasty Water Lily Quill. This is a 3 aught quill. Um, I've got a video coming up on how to use quills. And... In the IPC line, I love these. This is the Point Blenders, an IPC Point Blender. And then, of course, I have to have a mop. And I like this one. This just this is an oval mop. I love this. It's a short one. 
and this one has seen better days because it's shedding like crazy but yes I I don't use a ton of brushes but this is about the extent of it on a on the daily this is what I would use right here so it isn't really that much but I do I will admit shamefully <laughs> that I have a crap ton of brushes there's just no other word for it <laughs> <laughs> no no there isn't <laughs> I have a I have a lot of brushes it doesn't, you know, the fact that I work with a brush company has a lot to do with that. You work with a brush company, you paint for a living. Yeah, I need brushes. Yeah, you're going to have, have a lot, a lot of brushes. brushes. <laughs> it only makes sense. It does make sense, but you know what? There, There is a point where you go, really? <laughs> More brushes? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> like when I There's a the fine book. line between hoarding and... <laughs> Yeah, and I think I crossed that line. I actually uh, no, use that no. line like a jump rope, so. Um, it, it's the same with paint and stencils and stamps. What was it? The difference between a hobby and an obsession is mental illness? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, I swear. <laughs> yep. Really, I'm fine. <laughs> So I've got all those little vines and tendrils in. Now we get to start talking about some of the, the fun stuff. Remember the center of this thing. Uh, I'm going to be using this. This is a fountain brush. If you have a deer foot and would prefer to use a deer foot, by all means. You, it's, we're just creating some texture. And I happen to like this one. I also have a little deer foot here. I just find this one is a little on the soft side. Um, but we can use that. So I'll just show you the difference between the two. I do a lot of pouncing and blending. So in the end, it doesn't really matter which brush you use for this. But I've got a fountain brush. I'm going to pick up a little of the base color that I used for this. And this is just Eschfaltum. I know you're shocked by that. So I'm just picking up some Eschfaltum. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that sprout, which is that yellow green that we had on the palette. And I'm going to just tap like this. So just as if you were using a deer foot, I'm just tapping, pouncing some of this color in. And I want it to be irregular. I don't want it to be perfect. Just like that. So that we have, you know, a little circle in the middle. So it just leaves a circle in the middle. So again, I'm going to do the same thing to this little guy up here. So I am going to pounce this enough. Oh, I maybe pick up a bit more asphaltum. There we go. So I'm just pouncing up and down. I'm going to leave again an opening in the middle, a little circle in the middle. And I'm going all the way around the center of this flower like so. So we have circles. Now I go back and I pick up a little more sprout and this time I'm going to just highlight the top of this circle. Just with, you know, a light touch. You would call this stippling or pouncing whatever but I want a little bit just a lighter value at the top of this and leave some of that texture behind it doesn't have to be perfect and then down here on this lower portion we're going to do the same thing but sort of a u-shape like so so it kind of creates a highlight on the edge of this and at the top and you can adjust it as you go so if it doesn't look quite highlighted enough don't be afraid to tap a little bit more of that green in it won't hurt and then I'm going to do the same to the one down here 
that's why I say it doesn't really matter which brush you use. If you're using a deer foot, fabulous. If you're using a fountain brush, fabulous. Either one will work. And there we go. So we've got some nice texture in. And again, I'm just, I'm pouncing and letting these colors meld a little bit. There we go. So we have nice little highlight down here and here and a nice little highlight up top. And then we're going to use that same technique to do the center of the flower. So I'm going to make a nice little circle in the middle of that, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a ring around it like that. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just going to be a little bit of a ring. So it looks like a low area in the middle of this flower. Oop, might have a little too much green on there, but there we go. There we go. So it's not perfect, doesn't have to be, but it's going to give you that nice soft texture, sort of a pinprick type texture in the center of it. I'm going to clean out this brush because it is loaded with paint. And if you're not familiar with a fountain brush, this is what they look like. It kind of hollow in the inside. If you look here, it's hollow in the inside and the bristle is around the outside and it forms like a little fountain. The hairs come up like a little fountain, hence the name. So that's how I created that fun little center. In there and we're going to enhance that a little bit with a little float of lamp black if I could find my lamp black so I don't need a ton of color on my brush but I do need it to get a little darker so I'm going to dry this real quick because we're going to put a shadow on the center of these flowers and I'm going to do just the bottom half of this flower so starting at about the halfway mark I'm going to put a float of lamp black along the outside edge of this flower right there and I'm only coming up to about the halfway mark the black is not full strength I've thinned it out a little bit so we have a float at the bottom of the flower just going to give this flower a little more shape that's all it's going to do there we go and then we're going to do the same thing to the inside of this flower right here again don't worry about being too meticulous just going to float into the center of that just to give it a little more depth doesn't have to be perfect we want a softer look in the middle but there we go so we'll dry both of those I'm going to rinse out my brush and then I'm going to switch over to my rigger and I'm going to pick up a little bit of saffron yellow which is that transparent yellow and we're going to start putting some highlight in along the top here and it's just some small dots don't make them too big and just in that highlight area on the flower don't be afraid to take them off either a little bit I don't want a ton of them and I don't want them too big. So we've got a few up top here and we're going to do the same thing on this highlighted area here with that saffron yellow. 
keep them small spread them out a little bit like so and we'll do the same thing to the one on the bottom I found that if you keep them small this is much easier to keep track of this highlight because we're going to add a couple of other colors while we're at it so smaller highlight dots are always better and then just it's so much easier to control it when those dots are small there we go so first the saffron and then we're going to use a little bit of that sunny day now I just pick up the dirty brush again don't overthink this so you're going to just sort of scatter in and among that first bunch a few dots of the sunny day and don't be afraid to let some of them go out onto the petals it doesn't hurt so again just little tiny dots they don't have to be consistent in size just a smattering This just helps brighten this a little bit gives you the texture but brightens that highlight a little and then we've got one last color to use and that's a little bit of warm white and you don't need a lot of it it's just going to be a few dots here and there I had a comment oh <laughs> but I'm gonna you know what uh, it's just, it, it's not hoarding brushes. No. It's being prepared. Yes. Thank you. I am well prepared <laughs> for any eventuality. Can't do that with guns. No. Because <laughs> apparently you're a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but there, I had to open another bottle of warm white. Oh, for my Canadian friends, um, go and check out your local great Canadian dollar store. That's the one with the red and white. Um, they actually carry a rack full of the Americana paints. And I think it's their top 100 colors. Nice. So they actually carry more than Michael's <laughs> of the Americanas. Yep. Anyway. There's Patrick. Hey, Patrick. I hope you're having a great day. So just a smattering of a few little small dots of warm white just helps make these a little brighter. And I keep looking at mine thinking it needs more something. It's, I didn't leave enough texture in there. So I need to come back in and, and, and put some in. Because it bugs me that I don't see that texture in there. So I'm just going to pop a little more texture in. There we go. If anybody wants a good laugh, just Google Riker the service dog. <laughs> that'll, <laughs> enter that'll entertain you for a little while. Yeah. He's Riker we'll is interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll just say he's... He's special. He's over ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> but he aims to please. <laughs> yep. His heart's in the right place. <laughs> and that's Riker with a Y. Yeah. So there we go. I'm going to just throw in a few more little white dots because, you know, I can. And I like them. And I'll probably putz with this some more, but you get the idea. Because, you know, I'm kind of weird that way. So I'm going to grab my gel pen because, you know, I love my gel pen. 
and I'm going to put a squiggly line all the way around the center of my flower on the edge so that it goes over onto the yellow a little bit and onto the petals and onto the center and it's just a squiggly line all the way around because da -da 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 -da. I, I don't know that I could paint anything without my gel pen anymore I love my gel pen and then on these leaves just I like putting a few little textures in just these little little bits like so I don't overthink it though it would be boring and this is just a fun way to finish off these pretty flowers you can do this with a brush too if you were of a mind but I kind of like the pen you could do this with the gel pen you could do this with that um, that marker the what do you call that marker Identipen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go grab it because I can never... I, mental block when it comes to that thing. <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> I just sit here going, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get there from here. <laughs> Great pen. Just... <laughs> You know, does everything you, you ask of it, but... Needs I, a more memorable name. I, for me, definitely. <laughs> I, definitely I, just, I have to actually read it to remember what it's called. That's terrible. Sao Paulo, Brazil. Welcome. Oh, welcome. So I that's what I love about the gel pen. I can just, you know, I can putz. I can do all these fun little doodads and whatnot and I can come back in I keep looking at this going it just doesn't have enough texture in the middle it's kind of flat kind of mosey looking don't I don't do mosey looking so I'm gonna just tap some more texture in because I can it's mine I'm the boss of me <laughs> I can do whatever I want so I just wanted to add a little more texture to this because it was I don't know it was wanting you have your audience screaming identipen at their phones <laughs> <laughs> and their iPads and their TVs. I'm sorry, guys. I just, I don't know what it is, but I can never remember the name of that blessed pen. Riker sure does love his tennis balls. Yes, he does. <laughs> oh, see, they got them searching it now. Yeah. yeah. Riker the service dog. So... All I did, I mean, see, this is just goes to show that you can putz with this even after you do all of those fun little details. You can just putz. I like putzing. Putzing works for me. So, okay, I'm happier. I've got a bit more texture in there. It just wasn't, it had no oomph. You know? It's got to have oomph. Yeah, you can't have a walker with tennis balls on the end. Oh, my God. <laughs> not the service dog for you no <laughs> you know the road to hell comes to mind <laughs> you know he's full of good intentions but you know but dry brush not thing. fry brush <laughs> what do you fry brush with <laughs> <laughs> what do I dry brush with um, I like my point blender. Depends on what kind of an effect I want. If I want a really soft dry brush, um, I break out my point blender. But if I want something that looks a bit more um, coarse, then I like my... What the heck is the name of that brush now? Jeez. This one. My Mezzaluna. <laughs> okay. I have a new blank. So there we go. We have pretty sunflowers. I love sunflowers. 
So now we just need to plant some sunshine. So we need some Bahama Blue. Because that's my favorite. I love Bahama Blue. Bunny leaves. Bunny leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> And there it is. So I'm going to use my number two rigger for this and a little bit of my Joe Sonia and some Bahama Blue. Did I grab Bahama Blue? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> I don't know the way the day's going. It could have been anything. Should, should we be worried about this pot roast? No. Okay. The, no, you should <laughs> not be worried about pot roast. It's not rice. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that rice is either stale or did you get rid of it? No, I didn't get rid of it. No? I don't know what the problem was, but it just... I undercooked it two times in a row. That just doesn't happen. I'm sorry. No. Not to me. So I was a little annoyed. <laughs> no, actually, I was a lot annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> mm, crunchy rice. Yes, no, I didn't like crunchy rice. So one of the reasons that I love this rigger is that it's such an easy brush to control. It looks like a liner. It's built like a flat. I can press down on it. It opens up, fills up the space that I'm trying to paint. And then when I release the pressure, it comes right back up to that nice little chisel edge. And so it makes painting lettering super easy so here's what I mean I put it on its chisel edge I press down fill up that lettering I can come back up onto the chisel edge press down and it just look at how easy that is chisel edge press down opens up back up onto the chisel edge it's just such a great brush for this type of work so if you struggle with painting lettering, I can't recommend these enough because they just, it's such a nice brush to, con to work with. So chisel edge, press down, chisel edge, press <laughs> down, easy peasy. I got a good laugh when you told me to watch Maddie Matheson. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's awesome. He's awesome. And he's local. Yeah. He's just from down the river here. Yep. You can only imagine the laugh watching this dog. Oh, you're in for a treat. Yes, <laughs> Riker is special. <laughs> but he is the goodest boy. Yeah. The other one that I get a kick out of is the, the Mal. What's her name? Um... Beretta. Beretta. <laughs> <laughs> Beretta the Mal. Yeah. Yeah. She's something else. Uh, is that a number two rigger? It is. Yes. Look at me go. There's a number two rigger faux squirrel from Dynasty. Yep. And if you're looking for them, actually the brush guys have got a sale on their website right now for a lot of different brushes. But if you're shopping for brushes, don't forget to use my coupon code. It's Tracy M. It'll give you a nice little discount on top of whatever deals he's offering this week cuz he's got he's always got a deal on. I just whoopsied. There we go. Three sizes? Zero, two, and four? Um, you Actually, there's a number of different sizes. There's a 10 yeah. aught, a zero, a two, a four, a six, and an eight. But the ones that I use the most often are the zero and the two. The six and the eight would be for much larger lettering. Yeah. Yeah. I should say the four, the six, and the eight. And, uh, and in decorative painting, we don't often have lettering that size, so. And I just like the ability to control 
this brush is easy to control. Whether you've got a thin, like heavily thinned paint or whether you've got straight out of the tube or the bottle, it's easy to control. It's almost like working with a pen, especially once you've been working with it for a while. And it gets easier and easier all the time. Uh, no, they're... What? Patrick's got a question slash statement. Okay. Aren't riggers the brushes used by professional sign painters like the old times? Um, yes and no. Yes and no. <laughs> sort of a modern <laughs> twist. Yeah. Um, it, a lot of sign papers used what was referred to as a rigger. It was a, very similar to a flat brush, just had a very long bristle. And then there's stripers, which is another brush that uh, detailers and, and letter uh, sign makers use. Where's my dagger? I think it's probably in the skull layer. Yeah. But, yeah. But riggers, they come in a variety of sizes, just the modern twist. So I've got sunshine, plant sunshine. I'm going to erase some graphite lines before I get too excited here. Oh. My dagger brush isn't in here. Uh, maybe it ended up on the floor or so. Yeah. So I want to remove a few graphite lines, especially around this lettering. So I'm using my Factus Black eraser. Uh, the other one that I use a lot is the Tombow Black. That's Those two are just fantastic for this because they'll remove the graphite very easily. They don't damage the paint even fresh paint. Um, and they also don't polish the background. So on dark colors, they're ideal. So you don't get shiny spots on these dark colors. So I just wanted to remove all that graphite. And you can have a look around. If there's some like around your flowers and whatnot that need that are still showing, you can erase those. But I think most of mine are covered. It's just around the lettering. So we have plant sunshine so I need some of my base color for this which is this it's Prussian blue uh, I'm moderately obsessed with Prussian blue lately so we're going to shade the bottom of the lettering with a little bit of Prussian blue and I had a couple of reasons for choosing Prussian blue for this um, first because I painted it with the lettering with um, Bahama blue, I wanted a darker valued blue for the shading. But because I was working on Prussian blue for the background, I thought, let's make this as simple as possible. So I load up my brush to float and I float right over everything. Except the petals. You don't want to float over the petals. But just float right over top of the bottom of the lettering like so. And because it's Prussian blue, and because the background is Prussian blue, it's not going to hurt anything. So I have my shading on my lettering. So when I dry it, that float just falls into the background. I was way off the, the screen there. I have it zoomed in quite a bit. Yeah. So, and any little spots that I may have missed, I can touch up a little. So you can deepen the shading if you want to at any time. And so that float just falls into the background. It doesn't doesn't make it difficult to hide any little baubles or whatnot. There we go. So the final step to that lettering, um, you can use a liner brush 
for this last step um, because you're just going to put a little highlight on or if you're feeling a little gun shy of the liner brush we can use a white gel pen where's my good white gel pen oh no oh no what pam robinson my old account was hacked this week oh so no working on restoring everything happy to find you here okay so that explains a couple of things <laughs> um because i got a friend request and a request to join the page from pam today uh, and I declined it because it didn't look like her page. It was a brand new page. So that's why. So Pam, just go ahead and make another request and we will grant you access to the new group page. So I'm just using uh, a white gel pen to add a simple little highlight to the left side of my lettering. Just like that. Nothing fancy. It's just a line like so just makes the lettering pop out uh where are your skull patterns ever available to buy they're on the website <laughs> all of them are on the website i think yes they are I know we took some down. I haven't done a skull in a while. I know I have not done a skull in a while. It's not very popular. It is around Halloween. It is. One of my favorites is my 4th of July. My 4th of July skull. It's one of my favorites. So there we have our little highlight on our lettering. Keeping it simple, I just... You don't need to overthink this. It's just a simple line. You would do the same thing with the liner brush. So it would just be a nice little bright highlight. Doesn't matter if it's rough. And now I'm going to ruin my manicure. <laughs> now, I used a chippy paint technique around the outside edge and you guys have probably seen me do it a hundred times. <laughs> I'm going to do it again because there's probably somebody who has never seen it. So I need a nice fat round brush. And I need some lamp black for this because I want this one to be subtle. And we're going to create a sort of a broken or a chipped paint look along the edge of the surface. So I'm just going to roll the brush along so that it creates this sort of broken edge. And I'm going to stop when I get to the flower. And I'll go all the way around here. So it can be narrow in places, wider in others. It can be irregular, it can be smooth, it can be whatever you want. Which site? Oh, tracymoreau.net. Yep. How did I, it's the peat. Brush rolled into the palette <laughs> good gravy oh well, you said you were gonna ruin your manicure well hello <laughs> it's because i always do day one never fails so i just like this this sort of broken paint effect on the edge of things it just especially things that are have a you know a country theme or a rustic theme I just like how that looks and so I'm going to do that along the edge of this now this pattern adapts really nicely to almost any surface as you can see because I had originally done them on a tag um, and then didn't have any more tags for today's class so I had to improvise a little bit and I'm so glad I did because I really love this surface for this piece. I just think it's so cute. And it, so if you're looking for this rolling pin, um, it's the large one from Sheila Landry at tollpaintingdesigns.com. I love this surface. So cute. And it works so well for this. So I'm going to finish off this little bit right here. 
And then you can use a liner brush and a little bit of thinned warm white to highlight the edge of that chipped paint effect, uh, which I did on the tag. But I'm going to show you the, the easy way to do it if you're not comfortable using liners for this type of thing. Because it, it does give you a nice highlight. And it's really easy. So I'm just going to use my opaque white gel pen. And I just follow the edge of that black paint that I just laid down. And I put a squiggly line all the way along it. Just trace the edge of that that bit that you just did. And no, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be continuous either. So if you get little skips and whatnot in it, that's okay too. I kind of like the, the break in the line. It's kind of fun. I like the imperfections. I, I'm always telling people that neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. There's a reason for it. It's Perfection is unattainable. And it undermines people's confidence a great deal. That drive to get things absolutely perfect getting things you know somewhat perfect or what we expect to get um, is often an unrealistic goal uh, as long as you continue to try to improve your work instead of trying to attain perfection that is far more important progress not perfection that's what I think. So there we go. We've got a nice little highlighted border on the edge of our chippy paint. You can do it, as I said, do it with a liner brush and a little bit of warm white. You can do it that way. You can make it as bright or as subtle as you want. That's entirely up to you. So we've got our highlight on and I'm going to dry that real quick and then I'm going to do that final step which is to spatter it and then we're going to talk about the bumblebee which I don't have on my desk. Can you reach up there and get me a bumblebee? Oh, you want a bumblebee? I need a bumblebee. Gotta have a bumblebee, small one. Just grab a bag. And just hand me the bag. <laughs> got all of them. He's, got, he's got, got everything. I managed to break my other bumblebee. So I'll have to replace him, but that's okay. So I've got, I love these little laser cut bees. I just think they're awesome. And I think that you need to have a bumblebee on here. You can even have a couple of bumblebees. I think that would be cute too, but we'll do one. Are so, you going to spatter? I am going to spatter. Mm -hmm. Just get distracted. So this is the point where I ruined my manicure. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a little bit of thinned warm white and I like spatter. A little bit. I prefer it fine. That's one of the reasons I use this method. Um, I love Sandy McTeer's method where you just, you know, tap it on your finger, whatever. I always end up with a big glob of white paint somewhere. So I, I prefer to use the manic manicure destruction method. It works much better for me. <laughs> Ruins my manicure, but I get a nice consistent spatter. So we've got a bumblebee and he needs some color. So we have a little bit of lamp black on the palette here. So I'm going to paint his legs and his body with a little bit of lamp black, like so. 
Let me see if I can't zoom in on the bumblebee. This actually, this part's really simple. He he actually goes very quickly. So I've just got the thorax and the legs and the head. You know, all of the appendages. I'm just paint that lamp black. And I'm gonna dry him real quick. Yes, those little bees are available on the website. Yep, yeah, we have a bazillion of them. This one's going in my kitchen. I'm going to hang this in my kitchen. I have just this spot. Oh, so this is like two birds, one stone kind of thing. Yeah. This is like a bonus. <laughs> I was going to hang the the tags, but... You're liking the rolling pin? I'm, I'm liking the rolling pin. It fits my kitchen better, I think. So I'm just going to base the wings with a little bit of warm white. Just one coat all we really need and then on the fuzzy butt I'm just going to base that little bubble butt with some white like so so I'm going to dry him really well And then I've got my 3 8 angle. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. Since I have it on the palette, I might as well do this now. And I'm going to put a float at the top of the head with some thinned warm white. Another float at the top of the thorax and then another float here. It's just going to give his body a little bit of shape. Just like that. So three little highlights. And because I was so heavy handed with white, I've got to I'm dry this. I'm going to come back in with a little bit of lamp black and just float a little right there, just to separate those, those little highlights. A little, that's all. And now we're going to add some color to our bee. So I've got a little bit of sunny day. I'm going to paint our fuzzy butt bee with a little bit of sunny day. Just like so. And I'm going to dry him. And then we can start adding all of the shading and the color to our bee. So we have a little bit of Bahama blue on the palette from our lettering. So I'm going to pick up a little of that and we're going to float some of that Bahama blue on the wings closest to the body, just like that on both sides. So both wings get a little float of Bahama blue. Just like that. And then our little bubble butt down here gets the same treatment as our sunflowers. <laughs> so we're going to use a little bit of that orange flame. What does your manicure say when you show up and having destroyed her work? <laughs> well, nothing. I, I do them myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> I do my nails myself, so if I mess it up, it means I have to fix it, so <laughs> I'm good with it. So, a little bit of orange flame to shade the butt. And I'm going to make sure that's really dry because I'm going to grab some of that saffron yellow. Remember what we did with the sunflowers with the saffron yellow? We're going to do the same thing to our bumblebee right over the orange. So now his butt glows. A phrase to remember. I can't identify the identipen. <laughs> I can identify it. You can see it's it from there. It's this one. <laughs> I can identify it. I just can't remember what it's called. <laughs> 
And it's a consistent and constant problem. <laughs> so now we're going to add some details to our B, which means I'm going to thin out a little bit of lamp black with some Joe Sonia's and I'm going to use my 10 out liner and where the yellow joins the body I'm going to put just a few little strokes to make them look a little fuzzy just like so just so we don't have that hard line anymore so it looks a little softer and then we're going to give a band across the body like this with a series of little lines using lamp black just go back and forth. They're not perfect. We just want them to sort of overlap each other so that we get a textured look like that. So he has a fuzzy butt. And then he's got a little spot down here. We're going to do the same thing. So there is our fuzzy butt. Now he needs a little bit of a highlight everywhere so I'm going to dry him real quick and then we'll be able to finish off all of the highlights on our fuzzy butt bumblebee whiskey is a spirit yep spirits are considered to be ghosts mm -hmm. so I'm not an alcoholic I am a ghostbuster okay <laughs> ew <laughs> so I have a little bit of thinned warm white on my brush a little bit too much warm white and we're going to put a highlight on the upper right side of each one of those little segments that we highlighted right there so a little stroke of warm white and do the same thing to the tops of these legs we're just going to drag the brush along the edge of that surface to give us a highlight just a little one doesn't take much and then we're going to add a few little strokes of warm white over top of the black and the yellow from top to bottom. It's just a light stroke just to give that a little highlight. And then we get to use this because I like this. I like my gel pen. So we're going to put a squiggly line along the shaded side of our B and some dots over top of that orange. Just some little lines coming off of the wings and then all the way around the wing we're going to use that scribble, scribbly line. And I like it to overlap so that we get a couple of little rounds around it. Neatness doesn't count. And we have a bumblebee. <laughs> so now you can elevate this bee by putting a little piece of wood underneath him. Um, but I think I'm just going to mount him. He's still going to have some dimension, but he won't break so easily. <laughs> of course, it would help if I hadn't been, you know, banging around here with it. But. So a little bit of your favorite glue on the back of your bumblebee. And then decide where you're going to place him. He could go here. But because I chose a larger surface than what I had originally used, I want to kind of fill up a little bit of this negative space. So I'm going to fill him, put him right there on my surface, like so. And we have our plant sunshine rolling pin. Boom. Boom. It's a fun piece and it's going in my kitchen today. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to the wheel. Cool. Tidya. So Renee's going to load all those names into the wheel. Oh, uh, they can just to. make out the Bob sticker on the back of your iPad. Oh. Yeah, there's Bob. He's missing a leg. He's missing a leg. I like my Bob sticker. I haven't been able to find any more. <laughs> uh, if I do, they'll be going out in goodie bags. Because I love Bob. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So Renee's got the Wheel of Names. Oh, 205. Nice. That's a great day. <laughs> there we go. And the hair has a mind of its own today. As usual. It works. It works. Covers the head. Uh, Donna Pult says, now, Renee, it's my turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're going to give it a good shuffle. Yep. And I, I got a new stack of sticky notes. I, I know. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> he was out of little post-it notes. So... Don't say I would never get you anything. <laughs> Sticky notes and socks. That's all I ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Makes your life simple. Yeah. First uh, one. Ooh. Spinning. It's spinning already. Spinning already. <laughs> Miss Sherry Ward. Awesome. So, guys, if your name is drawn on the wheel, don't forget, head over to the website. Click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner of the homepage and send us your shipping information so that we can get these goodies out to you as quickly as possible. And number one. Do, do, do. Sherry Ward. And today's giveaways have uh, a great set of those Dynasty Water Lily quills. So, I one thing I wanted to tell you about those quills. You might notice when you get them, this is what they look like. And they have this plastic over top. Don't take that off. <laughs> it, it's what's holding your brush together. Uh, this is a traditional style brush. So don't take that sheath off. Leave it on. You can take the little tube off, but leave the sheath that's around the ferrule. It's important that that stays there. <laughs> I would have taken it off. Yeah, I know. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of people do because they just don't know. That's yeah. all. You know. So I'm just telling you. Don't take it off. And winner number two is... Chantel Purdy. Nice. Chantel Purdy. Awesome. Um, the other thing I tell you, we've uh, posted a few Zoom classes on the website. You can register right on the website. And um, I'm going to be adding... Um, a new one to that this week. We're going to be doing one of the uh, one of the Christmas ones. The tag I can't remember which one it is. It's one of them. I think mm -hmm. it's the one with the Santa Claus on it. The cookies one, holiday treats. Mm, I think it is cookie cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and number three. Number three. Who do we got? Who do we got? If you have to look at the screen that close, you, maybe you should be wearing these. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm trying to see. You see how small it is on my screen? It's not much bigger on this one. Exactly. Can you Lori see Lori <laughs> Baraclo Bellucci. That's a name. That's a great name. Lori B. Lori Bellucci. So head over to the website, ladies, and click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner of the homepage and send us your shipping information so that we can get these goodies out to you as quickly as possible. They usually leave the Monday following the live, so the sooner, the better. We appreciate it. It makes our life a whole lot simpler. Next Saturday, we're going to be doing something fun with Mixed Media, so if you've got a journal page handy, there will be a pattern up for you on Monday. So come and join us next Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time right here. Same place, same bat channel. We're going to be playing with some mixed media. We've got a fun summer project for you. Something for the 4th of July. So I, I think you guys will enjoy it. And uh, we will also have a Canadian version for our Canadians. So we will have a happy Canada Day project for you as well. Also, check out the website for some new free printables that we've posted. And uh, we also have one if you're part of the Tracy Morrow Live Facebook group. Um, they are posted in the featured items at the top of the page. So you can just click on that. It'll take you right to the link. You can download the PDF for that printable. It's on there. And if you are not a member, head on over. Just go and search Tracy Morrow Live Group 
on Facebook and you'll find the page and send us a request for access. We have it set up so that you have to answer a few questions and then wait for us to approve you because we've had so many spammers and whatnot try to join that page that it, this is just the best way to keep everybody safe and away from the undesirable <laughs> the undesirable <laughs> you know, i don't like trolls and i really don't like people hijacking pages and, and accounts so we're trying to avoid that by making you have to jump through a couple of hoops so um i'm sorry for that but it just it's a way to keep everybody safe so if you're not a member of the facebook group please come over and join us uh to my members you have a live class coming up this week i can't wait wednesday we're gonna have so much fun they're scared to death we're actually doing a class in colored pencil this week it's gonna be a hoot colored pencil it makes me so nervous when i'm teaching colored pencil because it's just not a medium it's I'm, something you're still learning it's something i'm still learning so i'm happy to share what i do know but uh, it's this new one for me right. and uh, brace yourself uh members because uh you've got a scary one coming up we're not painting and you're not working with colored pencils you're gonna be working with ink <laughs> ink ink oh cool so and uh i know i decided that it would be a good idea to uh do a landscape so we're doing some landscape work with pen and ink wow you haven't done a landscape in a long time nope and they've requested it so that's what we're doing cool ink so we've and got landscape ink and landscape hmm. so we're going to be working with uh some tombow pens ah so it's fun and uh the giveaways for the members live the members only live on wednesday night you guessed it we've got some beautiful pen sets to give away ah uh, so oh, <laughs> i've seen those those are nice we've got yes they are they're very <laughs> nice so there's pens and pencils and all all good things tombow are in your giveaways for the members live or the members only live on wednesday night so that one is going to be great i'm so excited about that and then for july we're doing pen and ink you're gonna love it i'm loving it i'm having so much fun just getting it ready so because it's a medium i enjoy but it's not one i've worked with a lot in the last little while so i'm excited about that so that is it so just a heads up members of my uh, paid membership group don't forget wednesday night 7 p.m eastern standard time you have a live class and for all of you on the Tracy Morrow live group, we are here next Saturday. We're going to be playing with some mixed media for the holiday weekend. So, oh, we will see we're doing a live on Canada Day. Yeah. And we're going to cool. be doing something for Canada Day. So, and of course, the project is also going to have line drives for the 4th of July because we all celebrate at the same time. So, yeah. you know. We'll make sure everybody's covered, but yeah, yep. we're going to have some fun with some uh, Independence Day and some Canada Day projects for you next Saturday. So I'm excited about that. It'll be fun. And it's mixed media, so you can just grab your favorite journal or a piece of, of canvas or whatever you have laying around. You don't need anything special. Just some acrylic paints and, and just some stamps and some fun stuff, and we're just going to have a great time. Max, relax and enjoy the holiday weekend. So that is it for us. Uh, congratulations to the winners of the giveaways this week. And keep your eyes peeled for your new pattern coming up on Monday. And what else? Everybody, we love you. Please stay safe. Mwah. We'll see you again soon. Pet your dogs. <laughs> and your cats. And your cats. And your hamsters. And your horses. I... Uh... <laughs> He's cows, goats. <laughs> Have a great weekend.